Hello there and welcome back to another review. So you've probably been crying out for some more Hong Kong uh, movie releases. So I thought today I would have a look at In the Line of Duty 4, directed by Yun Wu Ping, starring Cynthia Khan, Donnie Yen, Michael Wong and Yun Yat Chor, made in 1989. Um, now, to the uninitiated getting into Hong Kong movies for the first time, you might be thinking, well, where the hell is in the line of duty one and two, right? So it can be a bit confusing. I have explained this before in my sort of my Royal Warriors and um, Yes, Madam uh, reviews. And as I said, they're all part of this like loose connected franchise um, in the line of duty free. Yes, Madam, Royal Warriors, all part of that sort of same series of films where you are, they're not connected. They're just basically a loose like a group of movies is what they are. There's no characters that sort of follow on, but they're all sort of part um, of the sort of the same franchise. Now, this film in the line of duty four is very interesting, right? This is very interesting, especially in terms of heart, like from a Hong Kong movie perspective, that when you're when you're like four films in to a franchise, when you're four films in, you expect maybe it's going to be business as usual. You're going to get the car chases. You're going to get the gunfights. You're going to get some, you know, martial arts. You're going to get some kung fu. But the, the interesting thing within the in the line of duty four is it's better than it has any right to be. Right. It, it really is an incredible effort from everybody involved. That is what's so amazing about in the line of duty for, um, you know, you, you expectations were always going to be high at this point. I mean, yes, Madam sort of set a trend for the girls with guns and modern day action. So, of course, four films in you thought it was going to be pretty much, as I mentioned, business as usual. But thanks to Donnie Yen, a great performance from Cynthia Khan who has great chemistry with Donnie Yen, by the way, I might add, and Yun Wu Ping's direction, not only does In the Line of Duty 4 live up to expectations, it actually exceeds all expectations as well at the same time. It is a phenomenal effort from everybody involved here. And it really does, as I say, exceeds expectations on multiple levels. Yun Wu Ping, after the Kung Fu boom of the late 70s and early 80s, pretty much he sort of died down. He was still choreographing sort of movies, obviously, but he sort of only directed when he wanted to, like when he wanted to, when he felt like it, when he felt the urge or need to. Um, so, so, which you know, I think he always preferred to work with smaller budgets. And this film has actually more of a connection with um, sort of his modern day action of sort of Tiger Cage and Tiger Cage franchise. And this is another thing where the film it can get confusing because I say Donnie Yen, Michael Woods, both in Tiger Cage, Tiger Cage 2. John Selvitt is in this, who's also in Tiger Cage 2. We've got Donnie Yen. Then we've got Cynthia Khan in this, who's also in Tiger Cage 2, but in the line of Duty Free. And it just, if you to say to the uninitiated, you can be like, which film do I watch in order? But as I say, Tiger Cage is a, like a separate entity altogether. Um, so you have Donnie Yen, you have Michael Woods, and the whole film, like I say, does play pretty much like a Tiger Cage movie. And there's a lot to love about this movie. And what makes it even more confusing is that Donnie, and, like I mentioned, Donnie and Cynthia Khan are both together in Tiger Cage too, even though she only has a small role in that. Now, as much as I love Yun Wu Ping's wild work in films like Iron Monkey, Tai Chi Master, and his choreography in sort of Once Upon a Time in China too, there was always something so visually appealing and satisfying when the Yun clan were just trying and keeping the fight sequences as realistic and as grounded as possible. So like when they're doing sort of modern day action, and it is just literally mano a mano, fisticuffs, like guns, cars, just straight action. It was something so satisfying when they were doing sort of this kind of choreography. And In the Line of Duty 4 has it in spades. It absolutely has it in spades. Like the action just really doesn't stop um, with this movie. Sure, I'm like, uh, it, this is relentless, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And, and I'm sure as many of you get, you, you get, as many of you know, who even if you haven't seen this movie, you get the an awesome, amazing end fight between Michael Woods and Donnie M, which is worth seeing the film for alone because it, it's up there in terms of like great classic fight sequences um donnie yen and yun wu ping working amazingly well together in terms of the fight choreography and it's a fantastic end fight so even if you haven't seen this film you probably know or have heard about the end fight between donnie yen and michael woods but it's a, it has to say, which is a fantastic modern day action scene and it's up there in terms of hong kong action but along with like tiger cage 2 this is there's the whole film is up there in terms of fast base action um and say so just what you just bang for your buck basically is what you get with this movie a great plot great performances and of course all the hong kong action you can want but this is a this is one of them films that is better than it like i say has any right to be this is four films into sort of a loosely connected franchise and it's to me 
yeah, you've got to watch Yes, Madam. Yes, Madam is a classic, but I think in the line of duty for, thanks to the efforts of Yun Wu Ping, Donnie Yen, Cynthia Khan, and just some great action and a great pace movie, in the line of duty four is up there. It's make no mistake, it is a fantastic effort from everybody involved. And hats off to Yun Wu Ping and all that, like I say, everybody in this movie for giving one of the best um, 80s modern day Hong Kong actioners. So we start with Donnie and Cynthia stalking out these guys at an indoor market in Seattle and I have to love how they openly just test the cocaine right there and then. You know, <clears throat> they just go into a shop. Let's just test the cocaine here and now. Let's not go into a back street or anything or a warehouse. We'll just test the cocaine here. They follow them to the harbour where one of the loaders is Yun Yat Chua. Uh, Cynthia ends up sort of befriending him as he thinks she is like an immigrant like he is. So no sooner are we at his apartment when his brother crashes in with some armed thugs who say that he owes them money. And you get action right away. Like immediately we're off, right? We are these like when I say this film is relentless, it really is. And it never feels forced, it never feels okay, here's another action scene. It it just ticks along really nicely, this movie. It really does. As I say, so we get action right away, weapons, you name it, and we get Cynthia using like two like spanners tied together as like nunchucks, which let's be honest, is pretty damn awesome. You have to agree with that. Um we also have another of the Yun clan in this movie, in Yun Shun Yi, who starts tailing Cynthia, and so begins another fight. And you really get to see what an actual powerhouse uh, Cynthia Khan is in this movie. Great kicks, great speed, and she was. In case you're not too familiar with who she is, she was one of these sort of actresses that what they did was they took Cynthia Rothrock, her name. They took Michelle Khan, like Michelle Yeoh, she she was known as Michelle Khan at the time. They took the Cynthia from Cynthia Rothrock, the Khan from Michelle Khan, hybrided them together. You got Cynthia Khan. So that's what they did there to sort of think, OK, well, we could probably market her name off of sort of these two. But she really is a sad powerhouse in this movie. So even right away, you with the film starting, you already get a sense of what the film is to follow and it's going to be like, and you're pumped right away, right? You're energised, you're up for it, you're in there, and it's, it's, it's a great start to the movie. So we meet Donnie Yen and Michael Wong, who are actually called Donnie and Michael in this movie, just to keep it simple. So it shouldn't be many like much confusion when I'm <laughs> referring to these two, because they are just simply called uh, their names. Donnie goes to tell this guy. Now, anyone would think at this point Michael Wong is involved right away with the bad guys somehow, as he doesn't seem to help much. So as the review goes across, like goes along and the plot progresses, let's see if my inkling is right. Let's see if my suspicions are correct, because he doesn't seem to be that interested in catching the perps and the bad guys initially. So one would think he might be involved. So Cynthia's buddy Peter follows some drug dealers and gets photos and decides like he's brave enough to hold them all hostage at once and one of them is CIA. The CIA starts shooting at the place, killing the cop and in his dying breath gives the film, this film that he's got to look, Yun Yat Chaw's character, who actually drops it and of course we get like a mini shootout. So it's one of them, you know like in Hong Kong movies or a lot of movies actually, usually it's always about a film, some evidence, a videotape, um, some paperwork, this is what it is with this movie. You can totally forget about the plot at this point. As I said, the plot is, I think it's serviceable enough, but you can just enjoy the action, just enjoy the fast-paced kinetic, uh, kinetic energy it has to it. So Donnie and Cynthia bring him in for questioning. The great thing about this film is there is actually some sort of effort with the characters and the plot. Yes, you have a traitor. Yes, you have the usual drug dealer's plot. But the whole film, when all its parts and ingredients are put together, is so much more than that. It really is. It, as I say, it's a really... Everybody involved was really putting in effort with this movie. You can tell this is not a half assed uh, sort of Hong Kong movie. There is actually a real effort being put in here. Um, Luke knocks out the cop who was trying to kill him, takes his uniform, escapes, and goes to his friends. Guess as well this guy had the keys to the handcuffs he was in, like he was wearing too. So he goes to his brother Ming's, and whilst they're fixing the antenna, Ming gets ambushed and shot by the people after him, which allows Luke to escape. Donnie arrives and goes after him, and after a rooftop chase and some nice punches between the two, he escapes. And that, when I say the whole film is very fast-paced, I mean it's fast-paced. And with my reviews, like I mentioned, if I go through it too quick or I t like skip over things, or get little things wrong, you will have to forgive me. I'm just sort of going through the movie, giving my opinions, and seeing what what I like sort of scenes that jumped out, or plot things that jumped out, or whatever it may be, things I remember or like about the movie, or even dislike about the movie. So if I go through it too fast sometimes, please forgive me, but I do not want to keep you here all day. 
That is something I've said in countless other reviews. I don't, you know, like people do movie reviews and they're like an hour long. No, you don't need an hour long movie review unless you're 100% dissecting everything about it. So we have to say here skates the whole where the whole film is super fast paced and it's everything you would expect from a Hong Kong action. It really is. Donnie at this point is pretty damn sure he is involved and not giving Luke much in the way of letting him explain. Cynthia, though, doesn't think he is guilty. So Michael Wong is put in charge of the case, and funny that he is the one I'm suspicious of, and he's in charge of the case. Hmm. So Luke plans to use money Ming gave him to go back to Hong Kong as a starway. So now the film shifts focus to Hong Kong. And by the way, whenever a film is sort of set in Seattle or America, it's usually, from a Hong Kong perspective, it's usually filmed in Vancouver. It's usually filmed somewhere in Canada because I think it's a lot cheaper, and I think it was a lot easier for the filmmakers. So Donnie is his usual hot-headed self, much like he is in Tiger Cage 2, like he's very opinionated, like in Tiger Cage 2 he smokes, I don't think he does in this movie, but very hot-headed, got that character going on. Calling Cynthia a bitch at one point as she pointed the gun at him to stop fighting with Luke, though to be fair his character does have an actual arc in this movie, which is something not always the standard uh, thing you would get from Hong Kong movies of this era. And I love how they've all but forgot about the drug dealers in Seattle at this point and just gone after this one suspect, uh, this one witness. Then we have the ambulance scene where the baddies use gas grenades and you will see Cynthia doing some amazing incredible stunts here. Head near the concrete as like the vehicle is going along on the front of the bumper of the ambulance. Enough to rival Michelle Yeoh from Supercop easily. Enough to rival that completely. So Cynthia Khan really going above and beyond in this movie in terms of her stunts her action scenes and what she can do and it's almost like her and i mean no make no mistake this is every much a cynthia carr movie as it is a donnie yen movie and like i say these two really do play off each other really well and you almost get the sense like with supercop they were sort of trying to outdo one another in terms of what you know in terms of the action scenes so the baddies drive off with Michael and Luke and put them in a freezer and just want the film back as that's all it's become about at this point. Uh, Michael breaks them free and again, very strange no one is watching the cell. Mm, and this is when we get the reveal, Michael Wong is actually on their side. So what are the odds, huh? What are the odds? I uh, damn well knew it. I knew it. So him and Luke get separated. He was using like a radio transponder to try and contact the, like, the police. And it just so happens Cynthia is monitoring the radio as he's trying to contact them. Again, what are the odds? And just as Michael is going to shoot him, as he says, he would recognize like he's witnessed the, like the CIA, the guy who killed the guy. Like he said, he would recognize the CIA killer from earlier anywhere. The cops burst in and Cynthia takes Luke to see his mum before he is extradited back to the US. Donnie just so happens to be there um, as they arrive. And you have to love, like, um, I feel actually Donnie Yen does smoke it. What am I talking about? Donnie Yen does smoke in this movie because when they go back to Luke's mum's, Donnie's got a cigarette on. Um, like I say, and his mum, Luke's mum is like the sweetest woman you could ever meet. And Donnie's just smoking in her apartment. He stub throws his cigarette out on the floor. It's like, lovely, thanks. You know, just making my place stink of smoke. Um, and they couldn't have made Luke's mum any sweeter when she thinks him and Cynthia are a couple with them both trying to hide the handcuffs. Then after out of nowhere, John Salvitti turns up on a motorbike with a machine gun and shoots Luke. Donnie stays behind to fight him. And I love even though Donnie was hiding just fine on top of this like lamppost and the guy couldn't see him. Donnie decides to sort of jump on him. Like Donnie, like Cynthia and Luke have like gone off, right? They've escaped. John Salvitti's like riding around in this motorbike. If you're not sure who he is, he's the guy Donnie fights uh, the Amazing Sword battle with in Tiger Cage 2. But Donnie has no reason to jump on him at this point. He could have just stayed there until sort of he'd done his patrol, he'd given up and he just drives off. But Donnie decides to take him out, which again, it enables, enables a good action scene. And you watch uh, John Savetti's style here, he's just so mad. Like he goes crazy with his technique. He goes absolutely crazy. Um, amazing stuff. Um, so after an awesome fight and showdown between him and Donnie, uh, Luke is now in hospital, though him and Cynthia have sort of butted heads up to this point. He does, Donnie does cover up for her as to why they allowed the suspect to visit his mother. So there is at least some element of character growth. There really is some element there of like, let's make, there is, okay, it's all about this film, it's all about these drug dealers, la di da di da usual stuff. But there is some element of like, Donnie's character does sort of, he sort of changes from being sort of a hothead to sort of actually maybe you're right like he, he does sort of weaken a little bit he does dare I say it soften um, as the film goes on so Donnie and Cynthia they do work really well and they have good chemistry here so Michael Wong the cop is working with Yun Shun Yi's drug dealer Wong kills Salviti when he is under questioning with like a needle from his shoe and Donnie is Donnie is being sent back to Seattle at this point 
Yun Chun Yi goes to blow up Cynthia's car and assassins go to take out a look at the hospital. And don't these people ever see that by trying to get one witness, they're just drawing more and more attention to themselves? It's the same with any movie, isn't it? Like, if you have this group of bad guys, they're after killing this one witness or whatever. Usually by doing so, by taking out this one witness, they're drawing more and more and more attention to themselves too. And it, like bystanders and the authorities and everything like that. It's like sometimes it's best to just let them go because it seems no matter how many films I've seen where the bad guys, in the purpose of trying to get Exhibit A, they draw more and more attention to themselves. So... Out of nowhere, Donnie turns up um, to deal with the assailant. I love when she asks, why did you come back? He's like, well, I thought the death of the suspect like in the interrogation room was a bit suspicious. Um, you think um, the guy, the fact that John Salvitti just randomly dropped down dead for no reason might be a bit suspicious. So you might, you know, you might be right there, Donnie. So at this point, they both suspect Michael. Have to love how Cynthia and loads of men just go straight to the drug lords manufacturing warehouse and just walk in and start shooting the place up like they've always known where it is. Like the drug den's just round the corner, we're just popping and bust it now. Um, so they shoot the place up. Cynthia has an awesome showdown. Well, I want to say fairly Ruth Cordick. I could be wrong. I think that's her name. If I just had to say the blonde female fighter, you'll know who I mean. But an amazing uh, fight, a really great fight. Not only that, but a great set piece as well. And like this sort of metal um, sort of stairwell. Um, and I say the pace of the movie is still going it doesn't stop and what like I say not what, only do you get here a good fight but a great set piece too um, Cynthia gets ambushed at Luke's mother's house by Michael Woods when just a second ago she was at the drug dealers Donnie confronts Michael after Luke identifies the killer from Time magazine Donnie rec like, he sort of records the conversation he's having with Michael Wong's character after being kicked out of his apartment and he's being pursued by motorcycles so begins a motorcycle duel involving hammer hammers, shovels, axes you name it, why not let's just throw it all on in there let's say just keep the action going keep it intense, keep it energetic and it's just great Great, great fun stuff. Donnie and Cynthia are now wanted by the police. Oh, and Luke's mum has been kidnapped, we learn. So our three go and see Michael, and he's got like this massive tower building, right? All of a sudden, he's got like this massive sort of tower block that you assume the way they paint it and the way they describe it, it's sort of all his, even though it's not. But the way it's sort of filmed and everything, you think Michael Wong's sort of suddenly this great big kingpin with this massive building. Um, and what is great about the ending is they all get to show off their moves. Cynthia in particular doing some amazing kicks and leg work against Stephen Berwick. Yun Yat Chor gets the strutty stuff too. And this is very every bit, as I mentioned, the Cynthia Khan movie as much as the Donnie Yen film. Make no mistake. Much like Supercop, um, you know, as I say, um, really is. Our female and male lead here work really well. And I have to love how the mum is just hanging from a rope outside from the building with Michael Woods waiting at the top, waiting for Donnie. Bearing in mind, this is like you know, the building where Michael Wong's meant to work. This is sort of his place of <laughs> business, his office. And as uh, I say, he's just got Yun Yat Chor's mum uh, just hanging out the side. Just, you know, why not? Just dangle her out there. So, as I mentioned, what a great showdown between Donnie and Michael Woods at the end. You get throws, you get wrestling, you get kicks, you name it. And what is great about the end fight is they take their time. It's not a rushed fight. Like, they, Yun Wu Ping and Donnie, in terms of the choreography, they're really taking their time. Like, what else can we do? Let's try something else. So, but as I say, really foreshadowing sort of the later films like Flashpoint, watch Donnie Yen, where he would do more grappling and things like that. But here you say you get wrestling, kicks... And it's not overly short and shows even when Donnie Yen, he was like I say, he's thinking of different types of fights and like fighting techniques and styles he could use in his movies. To be fair, even though it's a fantastic end fight, it really is Cynthia who gets the most mileage out of the ending of the movie. Then Donnie, like, then Donnie, I mean, she kills Michael, she takes on Berwick, she shows off her kicks. She even shows off her sword play um, as well at one point. And like with many Hong Kong movies, it abruptly ends after they kill uh, Michael Wong. But please go and check this one out. It's an awesome Donnie Yen flick. It's an awesome, awesome uh, Yun Wu Ping flick. And it's definitely, it's just one of them modern day Hong Kong actioners, along with the likes of Police Stories, The Yes Madams, that you do, you really do owe it to yourself to check out. It's Yun Wu Ping and his modern day sort of action finest it's Donnie Yen and Cynthia Khan working really well amazing M fight between Donnie Yen and Michael Woods and it just as I say it just got everything it's just it's one of them sort of the modern day Hong Kong action movies that you just can't fault it's it really is a, a great 
a fantastic movie that I wholeheartedly recommend that you watch. If you've seen Yes, Madam, you could probably skip the others, but make sure to check out In the Line of Duty 4. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review. See you again soon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory.